And welcome back. Well, coming out of a long, cold winter, spring is the perfect time to refresh and renew. Carol Nixon, the editor in chief of Milwaukee Magazine, is here to chat about something fresh for their April issue, which lands in stores today. This is not only a big issue because of content, the magazine now has a new look. It looks good. I think it looks fantastic. Thank you. Well, Thank you. What all went into this new look? You know, it, it's a lot of conversations about fonts. Have you ever had long <laughs> conversations no. about like whether, you know, what a font represents? It's it's sort of like talking about yes. wine, but even more abstract. You Anybody know? who's done a website has yes. done that conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's we, long and tedious. We went with Canela. We felt it was <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we felt it was sophisticated yet friendly. Yes. We felt it represented the city and also the direction we want to go in. So that that was a big I part like that. of it. I love sophisticated it. and great. friendly. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. I, I like that. looks great. I okay. love it. And so fonts were just one part of it. We rearranged the uh, sections in the mm -hmm. magazine. And a lot of the stuff is, you know, I don't know that readers really pay that close attention to how the magazine's organized. But the point of it is to make the reading experience just better and also Absolutely. to reflect the content to make. Will people still see their favorites there in the, the list of contents and be able to yeah. find the things that they've grown accustomed to, to yes. reading and enjoying? But there are a few with a few changes. So um, instead of a culture section, we folded that into the front, the first section in the magazine, which is now called Navigator. Nice. And it also includes a little bit more style. So we this month we show a boathouse. Um, Fun. And uh, we'll also be covering the suburbs a little bit more. We have an article about Wauwatosa in, in that section. And we start out with opening day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> great, great. Yeah. With opening day, is it what to eat while you're there? Is we it have a little bit about what to eat. Okay. We have a little bit about how hopeful we are about the brewers <laughs> and you yeah. know, think it's going to be the year. Because it was a good one last year. Yeah. 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 It's so. had such a great start already, which exactly. is wonderful. That's awesome. Cool. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about some of the other things. Things. One of the articles you have this month is Where to Live Now. Yes, that's one of the features. That's the cover story. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we used um, data. It's all you know, scientifically, factually based. And uh, using that, we divided up um, our, our community into four um, areas, north, south, west, and then central city. Mm -hmm. And within each, we looked at what um, the best neighborhoods are for if you're if you're just a first time buyer, if you're trading up, if you're downsizing, cool. et cetera. I uh, love that. Yeah. Are yeah. there a lot of surprises, do you think, about where to live now? You know, I, I think we dug up some gems. I think that, you know, I think people who uh, look at the article will be a little surprised, particularly within the central city. Um, but the other thing is that, you know, the, the real estate market right now is so hot. Mm -hmm. that if you are in the market to buy, you should do some research. And, and you gave some tips for home buying, too. Yes, we did. Oh, I think yeah. that's very, yeah. very useful for people. Absolutely. What are some of the other must-reads in the, in the magazine this month? Well, also part of the redesign is um, we've added something called the big story, mm -hmm. and that's going to be a three- or four-page story in the insider section. This month, it's about a local priest who came out as gay, mm -hmm. and, and that's the type of story we'll be telling in, in this um, department. It's a it's a, a news story that requires a little bit more thought, a little more in-depth reporting. Is he one of uh, the first priests to do this uh, per that title, the out heard around the world? You know, uh, he's one of the very few. I mean, I wouldn't, he's mm -hmm. not the first, but there aren't that many uh, priests who have come out. And it's a tricky topic because yeah. he is celibate. He's taken a vow of celibacy. And that's yet, exactly what I was going to yes, ask you. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's, I think, what makes it an interesting article or, or a topic that we wanted to delve further into because there's so many nuances of it. Mm -hmm. And um, the Archdiocese has been very supportive, but it has, you know, it has gotten a lot of publicity and people are talking about it again all around the world. So. Mm -hmm. That's great. Good yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. Great to, to have to start conversations like that because I think the more people talk and understand, right. the more understanding is always great and good for you for writing something exactly. that's received and so good much for attention. Him. I'm, I'm excited for the magazine. Also, you have a local priest who is, they think, is going to yes. be um, yes. sainted. One step from sainthood. That's um, exciting. Casey Solanus, and he was from northern Wisconsin. He studied in Milwaukee, and then he spent a, a, the biggest chunk of his career in Detroit. And mm. he was uh, beatified, and so now it's just a waiting game to, as to whether he'll become a saint. But it looks, fingers crossed, looking good. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> what are the big things that he has done? Like, what would he become the saint of? Do you know that? Yeah, um, 
He was known for working with um, the, the people who were most down and out, mm -hmm. and he had a real talent for listening to them and inspiring them and helping put their life on the right track. Mm -hmm. And then as part of uh, the requirement for being beatified, he um, posthumously uh, um, achieved a miracle okay. in healing a woman who had very bad psoriasis and, and um, skin problems, and she was was healed by okay. him, by wow. praying to him. Yeah. Another issue, another must read is about immigration. Yes, In this yes. April issue. Yeah, that's a really interesting story because, you know, we're a city of immigrants. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the whole country is a country of immigrants, but in particular, Milwaukee was a melting pot at the beginning of the last century. And now we're still a melting pot, but it's a different demographic. And so we talk about the different um, ethnic groups that are coming to the city and why and what their experience is here, and, and it's, I think it's very compelling. And, and so many different reasons, for instance, um, many people from India are coming particularly to the western suburbs, and that group is highly educated and is having a different experience than people who are coming uh, more as refugees from mm -hmm. um, escaping you know, terrible political situations. So. Yeah. Interesting reads this month. People yeah. got to pick up the magazine. It's on, it, in all the typical places, right? Yes, it is. And as part of our redesign, we are launching a hashtag, Read Local. Love I think that. it's so important that that the city the city has a magazine like this. So. Absolutely, that's great. And you've now been named publisher along with editor in chief. I have. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you very much. That's Thank fantastic. Much. I think that's great. The buck stops here. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely, it does. Uh, MilwaukeeMagazine.com is where or Milwaukee Magazine mag.com is the website people can visit to find out more to subscribe and to see more about some of these great um, issues um, articles that are in this issue love what you're doing great. thank you thank, thank you so much so good to be here mm -hmm. nice to have you